Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, and I am showing you I have the iRig Studio right here. I have loaded on my iOS device the Mic Room, which is an app that actually can change the microphones. You're, you're seeing over here the actual mics that uh, it sets it to you. Now, it, right now I have this set, of course, the iRig iMic Studio. Um, you can also use it with your iRig Mic HD. You can also use it with the microphone that comes straight from the, on the uh, iPhone or iPad and uh, many other different microphones. So this is an app that works across the board. Now I'm using it on the studio to show off the uh, capabilities of the studio because this has a great little capsule in here. It's a nice condenser microphone. It's perfect for instrument uh, capture. It's perfect for vocal capture and many more things so that's what we're going to test right here some vocalists have it and and they use it and it works really well i i, I have a few sm57s myself so this irig studio is supposed to be sounding like an sm57 through a digital modeling system through the ios device we're going to flip it we're going to move over to the dynamic 58 which basically is an sm58 uh, vocalists would have it uh, you might might up a you might mic up an instrument very rarely but it's mostly for you know like a, a vocalist backup vocalist lead vocalist sometimes lead vocalist it really depends on the ren range of your voice if you've got a really low voice or a really high voice you might want to go with different microphones but if your average run-of-the-mill voice or you're just putting together you know this is something you know bingo or something like that then it's perfect so let's move on from here. Those are the 57, 58. You don't hear much of a difference there. We're going to get into some microphones where you can hear a difference. This is the Dynamic 20. Now, you would see this microphone in a uh, radio studio or a higher-end podcaster would uh, have this thing. It's, it's a long neck, um, and it's a dynamic microphone. Uh, it's used, like I said, for podcasting or radio broadcasting. It would be on one of those scissor stands, which is a mic stand that you can raise and lower without uh, making noise throughout. That it has a little shock mount on it and everything like that. You'll You'd probably see that in uh, radio stations across the country. So this is the Dynamic 20. Moving on, we've got the Dynamic 421 here. This microphone would be nice to actually do an overall room view. Um, sometimes you would put it over maybe the drums, the high toms, uh, to catch more than one tom or something like that. But before we move on, I want to show you this really quick. In the settings here, I have this set as a latency of ultra low. And the reason why is I don't want... Uh, right now, I'm, I'm dealing with latency in this ear because it's going through the PC and back. Um, but I want the, the least amount of latency. When I don't have it hooked up and I just have this hooked up straight recording from this phone, uh, you'll, you'll hear very low latency. Um, but if you want ultra low, it just means that it's working a little bit harder on the phone to get that sound back out to you. This is the Dynamic 441. Now, uh, once again, a lot of uh, vocalists, uh, you know, you want to have that special look in front of you, then they'd get this type of microphone. But it does have a little bit of sound, and hopefully you're hearing these sounds um, as I'm flipping through the microphones here. And, of course, with the volume, you can adjust the dials through the front of the microphone, of the studio microphone, or if you have the iRig mic, you have the little dial in back there. And let's move on. This is the Dynamic 609. This would probably be used in front of a uh, guitar amp or uh, maybe if it's uh, doing an instrument. Uh, acoustic instruments are nice on this one. Uh, this also will be nice for uh, drums, uh, toms, and stuff like that. We've got a Condenser 67. This is another popular podcaster slash radio host type microphone. Um, it gives you a little bit more higher range, a little bit more depth, and, uh, and of course, the, uh, the envelope. If you can see on the microphone, it has this like little bean-looking thing. That's the pattern. That's if, and, and I always say, if you take a balloon and just smush it into the microphone, you get that same pattern. That's kind of the pattern that you're, you're, you're creating right there, and you'll see that in that bean look on the microphone there. So from the 67, we're going to go to the Condenser 170. You might see this podcasters once again, radio uh, personalities. This also works great for, uh, for upper drums like cymbals or higher end uh, instruments. Maybe an accordion or a, uh, a horn section or something like that would use a uh, microphone like this. 
We got the bottle 563, which is supposed to kind of give you more of a authentic, warm tube type sound, if I remember correct. And that, once again, you can record vocals on this. Another condenser mic, once again, higher pitched voices, maybe a hi hat on a drum, maybe a flute. Uh, this type of uh, microphone, it's got a smaller capsule inside. And of, of course, this, the studio has a one inch capsule. The iRig HD has a smaller capsule, of course, and this is a dynamic microphone as opposed to the studio, which is a condenser. So they'll give different sounds through this. So y if you went back and forth, you could test that all out. Next up, we have the Condenser 414. This is a more versatile microphone. As you can see, it's got that same bean shape, but, you know, it's got that little switch back and forth. Only problem is you can't, I don't think you can change that switch. I haven't found a switch to change it. Now, if you changed it between the different things, it would go from that bean. So basically your vocals have to be in that bean range all the way to be able to actually encompass. So you could actually be talking from the other end of the microphone and it should still be picking it up. So it's perfect to put in the middle. Uh, if you've got a whole bunch of musicians in a circle, you put that microphone or you do a round table or something like that, you put, all, you put the microphone in the middle and everybody talks in, in around it and it'll capture all the sound there. But of course that depended on if there was a switch here and I, I don't know of a way to actually switch that around. Next up is the Tube VM. This is supposed to uh, give you a tube sound, and tube sounds give you a warmer feel when you talk into the microphone. So I sound more like an announcer, maybe a Barry White, oh yeah, or something like that. Um, of course, uh, this is meant for vocals. Uh, you can do this, uh, you can use this for other things. You could, if you had a warm, uh, a warm instrument, like maybe, uh, acoustic bass or something like that, it would be a nice, uh, nice microphone for. All right, next up we have the Condenser MD-1B, which is a, uh, condenser microphone. Uh, once again, drums, instruments, uh, uh so on and so forth. That uh, You can do a, a couple, uh, amps in this as well. The Ribbon 121, Ribbon microphones are meant to be very sensitive. So if you've got, you, you've got Ribbon microphone, you're usually in a room that has a lot of padding on it and you want to catch every single sound from the high S to the low P. And uh, th those are called plosives. And you want to have as much as possible. So usually a microphone like that will have a windscreen in front of it and you'll be like six inches away. Uh, I reduce my plosives in this case by actually talking uh, kind of side mic here. So it'll catch only part of the wind when I do a P or a B. Another ribbon microphone meant to be put onto a uh, actual music stand, a musician uh, doing vocals would probably use this. This is the Ribbon 160. Once again, it's going to give you that full range of sound right there. Then we've got the Velo 8. Um, this is perfect for, as you can hear, it's actually got a slightly deeper sound. So if you're if you're doing really bassy voice, this would be perfect for that. All right, the Vintage Dyn 20, a dynamic microphone, perfect for drums perfect for vocals, perfect for putting in front of an amp. So basically amps and drums, high high tops, basically. And now we're going into the old time. You can hear this difference. Let's do that again. This is the Dyne, and this is the old telephone mic. Uh, an older mic you might have uh, seen in the 20s, you know, oh brother, where art thou type stuff. Um, and as you can tell, there is a big difference between those uh, microphones, and it gives you a nice nasally sound what's usually the one kilohertz range sound and uh, works really well for that type of stuff so if you need that voice then this is the mic this is the vintage dynamic now you might have seen this if you watched anything elvis because that's the microphone he used if you're, you're can i get some mashed potatoes and peanut butter and banana sandwich thank you very much oh, oh, oh. that is this microphone as you can tell there's there's a nice difference there and that is the range of microphones you can get from the micro room. They'll probably add some more as you go, but uh, all, all in all, you can get this. Uh, the full pack is $4.99, and then two additional microphones at $1.99 each. Uh, check it all out over at IK Multimedia. I'll have the links in the show notes there, so check it out. Jeffrey Powers at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek. You guys geek out. We'll see you next time.